Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for attending this short presentation. Um, just as Kathy mentioned, I've only been familiar with WordPress since about February. Um, so I am using kind of the new Gutenberg format. That's what I learned on. So what we'll be going through today are just kind of the bare essentials of three of the main pages that you need for each of your websites, um, whether that's for services or you're a small business owner or, you know, organizing meetings. Um, that's what we'll be going through. So, um, goal for the day again is just to uh, one, decide what pages you might need for your individualized website. Two, um, the content that's required on each of those pages as kind of more of a bare bones. Um, and three, how Gutenberg can help us accomplish this. Okay. Um, so these are the topics that we're going to be covering today. On our home page, we will address the titles, how we're going to add kind of some cover, um, cover images or background images. And then we're going to talk about static versus dynamic home pages. Um, after that, we'll kind of go into the about page. Everybody wants to know a little bit about you in this day and age or a little bit about the product or service that you're going to be offering. Um, again, we'll just kind of cover how to add content on that page. And then the last page, one of the most important pages, is going to be our contact page. So we're going to learn how to add a physical address that, you know, looks nice, is clean, is presentable, so people are able to find you. Um, how you're going to embed a map so people can find you. And then again, just a contact form. Um, so if anybody has questions or inquiries, they can get in touch with you that way. Okay, so um, first thing is going to be titles. So uh, the, what we're going to be looking at today are a number of screenshots from a template called Radcliffe 2 on WordPress.com. I know some of you will be building on WordPress.org, so we'll kind of talk briefly about the differences between the two and what's offered for um, different block types. So with add title at the top of each of your web pages, you're going to have the opportunity to add a title. So you can just kind of welcome people or, you know, add in what you want. Um, always important to remember to update any new information that you're putting in. Um, it's wildly frustrating when you add a lot of content and then forget to save it. Um, so WordCamp 2019, that's just the title of, uh, of what we're doing today. Okay. so. Um, on your home page, when you start adding content, you're going to have these pre-existing blocks that are present. And they will kind of show up with a light gray writing. If you bring your cursor over to the reader's left, you're going to get a little addition sign that pops up. What you're going to do then is just simply click on the addition sign, which is going to add a block. And the blocks, you can start to choose from a paragraph block to add content. You can choose photos. You can choose slideshows. Um, but for now, we're just going to briefly touch on the paragraph block. So you're going to add in your content. Um, each time you're done writing something, if you press enter, it's automatically going to start a new paragraph block for you. Um, one of the really, I guess, like convenient things I found about Gutenberg is, again, if you bring your cursor over to the reader's left, you're going to get these arrows that show kind of move up or move down. So if you decide you want to move blocks of content around, you don't have to cut and paste it. Um, you can just simply click up or down, and it's going to reorganize the blocks on your page for you pretty quickly and pretty efficiently. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature. Okay. Um, Background or cover image. This is where you guys get a chance to capture your audience's attention. Um, I've been told in the past that having original content is usually the best. Um, there are websites out there where you can pull different photos for free. Um, sometimes the photographers who upload them just ask for a thank you, but those are always an option if we don't, you know, have a lot of time to go out and take photos of what we need to do. Um, so. To add, uh, add a photo, what you're going to do is at the top of a paragraph block or any pre-existing block on the page, there's going to be, again, another addition sign just at the top. You're going to bring your cursor over that addition sign, and here's where you're going to find uh, different blocks to use. Um, so in this, uh, for this case, we're just going to click on the cover block. What's going to come up is something that looks like this. So you can either choose to upload an image directly from your desktop, or if you've already uploaded all of your content onto WordPress.com or WordPress.org, they have a, a library there that you can just select from. 
Um, with this, you can also choose if you want your cover image to be the full width of the page. If you want it to be a little bit smaller, um, you can kind of choose if you want it to be left or right. That's helpful too. So this is what it's going to look like initially when you upload your cover image. Um, again, with the cover image, you do have the ability to add text over top of the photo. Um, for this example, I'm not sure why the words came up gray because when it's published, they come up white, but you can add whatever text you want over most cover images. Um, if you don't want to add text and you just want to have a really nice, big, bold visual there, uh, you can do that too. So again, we're going to save it and then we're always going to preview um, before you publish. So then this is what, you know, a cover image would look like in the, the preview mode. So you can see you have all of your tabs across the top for your web page. You have, you know, your title and then you have the cover image underneath. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Is everybody doing okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, so next part is blog posts. So. Um, this is where we're going to touch on having a dynamic versus a static page. Um, if you do want to have more of a dynamic home page for your readers or if you're into blogging or photography, um, there is the option to have your, um, all of your new posts or all of your new blog posts come up on your home page if you prefer more of a, a dynamic home page as opposed to just a static home page. Um, so what you're going to do here is if you go click on the uh, top left onto my site, you're going to get this menu that comes up on the reader's left hand side. So here, what you can do is kind of click into pages and all of your blog posts are going to be listed there. Um, alternatively, if you just want to look at your posts by themselves, you can select the posts, uh, post tab underneath the pages and just go in and do it that way. Um, so let's look at one more thing. So if we were to click on posts from this page, what happens is that we have the option to add a blog post from here. So this is where we can add a blog post. Um, if we want to make our home page um, dynamic, so we want our home page to kind of showcase all of the blogs that we've been doing, what you're going to do is come down to the customizer, which is a little bit below that. And within customizer, you're going to have the option for home page settings. Okay. Once you click on home page settings, it's going to bring you to this option. So here is where you can choose to have your home page as a static page, or you can kind of um, select just up here and choose to have it as a dynamic page and choose uh, to have your blog post show up there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that kind of concludes a little bit on the home page. Uh, we talked about adding content adding a cover page, and then deciding if we want it to be static or dynamic. Um, next, we're going to kind of go into About, and very briefly, um, we're just going to show you guys how to add some photos as opposed to just a cover image. So here, what you're going to do is you are going to highlight that addition sign um, on the reader's left again. What's going to pop up is this menu here. So um, within this you have you know, the option for images, the options for gallery, which is uh, gallery is just static images or multiple static images. Um, if you do search slideshow up here, you can choose to have a slideshow on this page where you choose between seven to five images um, and it'll just nicely kind of flow through. So that's how we add pictures. Um, and what it can look like is if you just want to add, you know, this is just a brief example from my own, is if you just, uh, you can choose different blocks and choose where you want to put pictures in. Um, again, on the About page, you're also going to want to add some content. So just like we talked about paragraph blocks before, um, you can put them in here as well. Okay. Um, now, last page, contact page. So we're going to go through a couple of things here. Uh, we're going to talk about how to put in an address, put in your maps, and then put in a contact form so readers are able to send emails to you or your business email directly. So for addresses, again, we're going to highlight that addition sign. And then in the top here, what you can type in would just be like a contact or contact info. What comes up is the option to put in address, uh, email addresses, or a phone number. Um, so we're just going to click on addresses and this is the box that's going to come up here. So for today, I just put in the address of Innovation Park. 
Um, if you do have a small business or a physical address, this is where you could enter that information. Um, so we're going to save and then preview, and then this kind of comes up nice and concise here. Okay, so that's addresses. Any questions? No? Okay. Um, next one is going to be maps. This one is a little bit tricky, um, only because we need to use a third party to get, um, what do they call it, a public access token in order to embed the maps on our page. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. If you're on wordpress.com, your maps are kind of automatically going to be included in all of those different blocks that you can select. Um, if you are wordpress.org, you may need to download an application called Jetpack in order to have access to the maps. Um, I have heard of a little bit of controversy with downloading Jetpack, so it would probably be best to ask um, one of the more experienced WordPress users about this um, if you are operating off of wordpress.org. Um, so we're going to select our maps. At the same time, we're also going to open you know, another browser page, and we're going to go to Mapbox. Okay, so map box, um, this is where you're going to get your free public access token that's going to allow you to embed the maps onto your web pages. So with map box, um, you don't have to pay anything to get this public access token. I believe you do have to create an account, but this kind of line of code across here, this is your public access token. So what you're going to do, you know, once you make your account and you're given this on Mapbox, you're just going to copy this and then go back to uh, the maps on your web pages and just paste it in. Um, once you do that, your map's going to show up quite nicely just on your web page. Um, at that time, that's when you can kind of put in your company address or your business address there. And again, we're going to save and preview. And then once we save and preview, what's going to come up is just a map that looks like this with just a nice kind of red token on the address. So then once it's published, it'll look something like that. Um, okay. Last bit here is going to be our contact form. So again, you can kind of see this is a Jetpack application. So we're going to click on the addition sign. We're going to type in contact in our search box, and that's going to give us the option there. Um, so we'll, we're going to select form. Once we select form, this is what you're going to see come up. Um, this part here where it says email address, that's the email address that you want your client base or your customers to send it to. So if you have a separate email you know, that's just uh, managing web traffic or if you have a separate email that's just for your business, that's what you want to go right in here. Um, this part, the subject line, um, that can be, it can be anything you want. I think when I set mine up, I just put in something like web traffic, so then when it does come into my inbox, I know I'm going to be answering questions from patients who have visited the website. But that's just a nice way to be able to keep track of stuff. Um, perfect. Just going to add, again, save, and then you can preview here, and then this is what it's going to look like um, when it's live on your site. Just super simple contact form. Um, right, and that's uh, that's it. Three pages. You guys have questions? Yeah. Mm. That's a good question. Um, this. Yeah. Go ahead, Chanta. Yeah. The answer is yes. Yes. This, okay, so this is, I guess, uh, so there's um, WordPress that people used to use that had um, kind of like, um, I've been told, a different template. Um, this template where you can kind of like select and choose different blocks is, uh, is the Gutenberg. Um, so I know one of the things that they're working on is making it more kind of like user friendly for beginners, like myself included. Um, the thing I found kind of tricky uh, when I first started and, you know, lots of help from the people and the volunteers in this room, um, was just like finding where everything is. So I was kind of hoping the purpose of today would kind of help you guys navigate or, you know, kind of, kind of get a start on things. Um, so this template that you're using is Gutenberg. Yeah. Um, 
Any other questions? How many people are building their own website? Yeah, okay. In the process, or are we just kind of doing regular updates? Process? Uh, in the process of building your own website? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, and everybody's using WordPress, I'm assuming, because you're here today. So what, yeah, go ahead. So are you doing your own, um, you know, updates and all of that stuff? Yeah, so, oh, sorry. Um, I just asked if I was doing all of my own updates. Um, yeah, so mine I only launched about two weeks ago. Um, one of the important things to remember is that your website is always going to be in a work in progress. You're always going to be updating it and changing it. Um, so yeah, like I will update my own website, but I'll also do it with the help of uh, like WordPress support. So they're, um, you can email them and ask them different questions. They generally get back to you within the same day, but I have found that very helpful for just kind of going forward because I don't have all the answers. Yeah, go ahead. Do you, do you have uh, more than three pages on your personal, like on the business website? Uh, okay, so the question was, do I have more than three pages on my uh, personal website or professional website? Uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, however, these were the three that I started with with Shanta because they are kind of like the essentials or the bare bones to get started. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so question was, have I ever had to upgrade, um, I guess like an old web, web, or sorry, WordPress website to a new one? Um, the answer is no. I only started becoming familiar with WordPress in about fe in February. Um, so I kind of started going to the, and, and most um, towns or cities will have it where you have a, it's on Meetup or meetup.com. You can just kind of type in WordPress and then wherever you're from. And generally, once a month, they'll have like a two-hour free tutorial where you can go and meet different WordPress volunteers, and then they can kind of help guide you or give you advice on what you want to accomplish. So uh, I've only been familiar with this kind of template or this kind of format. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pink type. Let me see here. Okay, so here, um, what you're gonna do is kind of in the reader's top left, you would click on my site. It's a little bit cut off there. Um, and then what you're gonna do is kind of scroll down to pages. So you can either add pages here by just pressing that little add button, or if you go back to where it's, um, you're just at my site, you'll have this option for pages here. If you just click on pages, all of this right here is going to come up. So I think the pink button says add new page. Um, just make sure you're highlighted on drafts when you add new page because if your site is already live, um, you don't want to add a new page to a live site because then it's going to get a little bit confusing and stressful. Um, so everything that you do, or at least how I started, all the pages I were working on, they were located in drafts until I was happy with you know, what they looked like, how they functioned, and then only after that time did I publish them. And once they're published, they'll kind of show up under this tab. So in each of these, what you can do is you can just preview them on their own and look at them while your site is live. Um, but if you do want to make edits to them while your site is live, I would suggest kind of doing it in a, in a draft mode just to be safe. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Yeah, um, great talk. Oh, thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so hang tight with that. If we go on this page, if you go down to customize, so one of the things that I found, um, so for your whole site, you can have the option to have it private where only you can view it or you can choose to go public so that everybody can view it. What I found is I was able to publish my pages 
um, and view them in the customizer section while my entire site was still private. So I got to kind of like test and see how everything worked, make sure, you know, like if I clicked on this tab, it was directed to the correct page. And once I kind of found everything worked that way, um, I, was, I was given instructions. I don't remember how to do it, but I was able to change my privacy settings so that I just chose like everybody could see it now and it wasn't just internal. Um, so you can do that kind of in the customizer section. Um, maybe like email WordPress for help before you start doing that, just so you can make sure that your privacy is uh, it, that, that it's private before you publish everything. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. That's good tip. Thank you. Um, for the beginners in the room. Yeah. I assume many beginners who are in this session. Um, can you talk about the difference between pages and posts? Mm, yeah, I'd love to. Um, Oh, sorry. For the beginners in the room, can you talk about the difference between pages and posts? Okay. So, uh, if we look here, pages are going to be your web pages, your home page that captures your audience, your about page that tells them all about you and why they should like you or your product, your contact page where you can find them. Posts are kind of like different blog posts. So, say, um, what, what do you do? High school teacher. Okay, and what are you creating a website for? Uh, both reasons, static website and blog posts. Okay, for what purpose? Uh, for students and other teachers. For students and other teachers? Okay, and what information do you want on it? Computer technology related. Okay, very cool. Um, so when you're doing this kind of stuff, um, I guess this would be like a technology event that you, I don't know, attended to learn a little bit more. If you wanted to post about that, you could create a post with some photos of, hey, I went to like WordPress 2019 in Hamilton. This is what I learned. You can check it out a little bit. And then that would be a post on your blog. So your blog can have as many posts as you want. Um, side note, the more you blog and the more you post, the higher your SEO, which is search engine optimization so the more you post the more Google likes your site and will find you faster so any kind of little events you um, attend you know perhaps like outside of school or any maybe like tutorials that you host with teachers or students those are all little things that you can post as um, like information nuggets that uh, people can just read about in your blog so uh, blogs kind of synonymous with posts, I guess, whereas pages are kind of like that raw foundation of information that people are going to scroll through and look at um, at your web website when you're online. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, what's up? If you want to what, sorry? You said a Google Analysis script, so I can try the the user of okay. Okay, there is, um, I'm not sure where it is on WordPress, but there is a stats page where you can kind of look up the statistics of how many people are visiting each page or each post. Um, this is, might be a good question for Shanta. Mm -hmm. um, probably want a type of plugin that would handle your Google Analytics specifically. Um, we can take that offline afterwards if you want, but um, there's usually a plugin for Google Analytics that you can use that will handle all of it. That's the short answer. That's the short, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you want to get a little bit more information about that or like which plugin to use exactly, um, Shanta would be a great person to talk to um, once we yeah, wrap up. Anything else or? No, okay. Um, Oh, yeah, of course. You probably want to start at analytics.google.com, and then you have to register your website there, and then they will give you a file that you have to insert into your website just to prove that you own that website, and then everything after that is automatic. You don't have to do anything on your website at all. Google will take care of that. Sorry, she's first, and then I'll ask. Yeah. Still use the default editor? Is that still? Okay. Um, 
Um, so then that has nothing to do with your themes. You still pick your themes. Yeah, um, so there are hundreds of themes to choose from on like WordPress.com or WordPress.org. Um, some of them are going to include like an e-commerce option. So if you are like selling things online, you're going to want to make sure you choose a template that has that capability. Um, if you just want something super simple, like there's, there's lots of setups there. Um, one of the interesting things though is if uh, you do want your page to look a little bit different or you do want it tweaked a little bit, um, if you email the wordpress.com for help, what they'll do is they'll send you like a little bit of code that you can kind of copy from the email and I don't know if I have it up here. Um, if you go a little bit further down here, there's another little tab that says like CSS. So you would click on that CSS tab and just paste the code that they sent you from the email into that CSS and it can kind of change, um, change the setup of your template a little bit if you find you know, there's a template and you like 95% of it but you want it to do something minorly different. Um, they're always really good at sending code for you that can adjust that um, if you're not like familiar with coding yourself, which I'm not super, so that was helpful. Yeah, no problem. I was just going to add that um, if we're in the Google Analytics code, some of the themes actually have that embedded already. Okay. Um, but, um, but when you get to that point of linking all your social media accounts, Hi everyone. Welcome to the and, um, and you'll be looking for those types of plugins, um, most of them have some type of way to, to link that Google Analytics code and put it in just in the box. Um, or there's SEO plugins as well, like okay. Yoast is probably one of the most popular ones, uh, and they just have it just a field that you just uh, paste into it. So it, it is super okay. easy, but it's a little bit down the line from, from here. Okay. I have to use my own coding web page. But for the web press, it's also another way to use the framework. I cannot find it. Uh, check out check out the plugin Yoast. It's it's really super easy to, to navigate through, and, and there's a, it can be very complex. But you'll you'll see a, a spot for the Google code, uh, and then you just paste it in. Yeah, no worries. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, cool. Thanks for coming, guys. Have a good day.